When it comes to clinical research on psychedelic drugs, the U.S. has come a long way since the 1960s and 70s. Really, that was the period when the United States started the so-called war on drugs. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. It was pretty much like somebody hit the pause button on all of this research. And only until the turn of the 21st century and more so in the last 10 years has this research expanded rapidly. I've been working at Johns Hopkins for the last 11 years studying psychedelics as potential treatments for a number of different health conditions. More specifically, psilocybin. Um, psilocybin is interesting though, it's found in all these different types of mushrooms, and we know that there's a, a long history of use in indigenous cultures. His work looks at how psychedelics can improve the way we treat people dealing with addiction or depression by altering a serotonin receptor in the brain. Um, and that causes some profound uh, mood and mind-altering effects. Combined with counseling and talk therapy, patients have described having profound experiences. It's as though my brain were trying to do, you know, a hundred things at once. Why does that work? And, and is it a long-term solution? Great question. Um, so first answer is we don't really know why this works or how it works. Um, it's been something that's been studied for decades. Now, when we talk to people about what it is that sticks out to them about their experiences, um, they often talk about these experiences as being big, kind of life-altering aha moments that could be very insightful for them. It's not always that way across the board. Right now, more work is being done with psilocybin as an aid to the treatment of depression, but FDA approval could still likely be several years away. Closer on the horizon, MDMA, also known as ecstasy, for treatment of severe post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD. We've been working on that project for about six and a half years now. It's funded by a nonprofit group called the MAPS PBC. For that, I talked to Dr. Jennifer Mitchell. I'm a professor at UCSF in the departments of neurology and psychiatry and behavioral science. And I am also the associate chief of staff for research at the San Francisco VA Medical Center. On September 14th, 2023, her project was published in the journal Nature Medicine. MDMA is administered three times in a very specific environment with a very well-trained staff at hand. And those dosing sessions each take about eight hours. And then in follow-up, we assess how much uh, PTSD symptomology a participant still has. Can you give me a summarized version of what the FDA approval process is like? Because it sounds very stringent. Yeah, it is very stringent, right? So God bless the FDA, it's trying to keep us safe. But the idea here is that uh, you have these different phase trials and each phase, uh, as the number gets bigger, you get closer to FDA submission of what we call a new drug application. And uh, the drug will soon be submitted as MDMA assisted therapy to the FDA for evaluation. I hope that will happen before the end of this year. Like psilocybin, MDMA was used in conjunction with cognitive behavioral therapy, and results showed participants with major psychological trauma experienced a significant reduction in PTSD symptoms versus those who received a placebo. I mean, I know logically, third and side bomb, all that stuff, I had nothing to do with I wasn't even there. Well, I think one of the special things about MDMA is that it really draws on self-compassion. And so when you're talking about the treatment of PTSD or perhaps even depression, it's really important to have a lot of self-compassion so that when you take a look back at your trauma, you can approach it without feelings of shame or embarrassment or detachment, which is, I think, very common. I don't know, I feel normal again, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel mentally relaxed, how about that? So if it is eventually approved for use, what is that use going to look like? Right now, it will probably be administered in a, a medical setting or in a therapeutic treatment setting by facilitators that are very well trained and vetted. So this isn't just uh, about FDA you know, approving this as a medication, but then there's going to have to be things that happen on the back end of that. So are psychedelics a solution? Certainly not yet. There are many unanswered questions about how these drugs could affect people with physical and mental health issues and concerns over how easily psychedelics can be abused. These drugs really do need to be administered with oversight. 
I hope that no one decides to try to do MDMA-assisted therapy alone in their living room because I could imagine that the consequences could be um, quite deleterious for a lot of them. For Solutionaries, I'm Katrina Scales. We'd like to hear what you think about the topic. Leave us a comment below and be sure to subscribe to our Solutionaries channel. We're just getting started.